What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch back here for another NFL video. And going into the 2018 season, every NFL season, I like to make predictions. And not only do I like to make predictions, but I like to make bold predictions. And in this video, I'm going to give you 10 bold predictions for the NFL 2018 season. If you have any of your own bold predictions for this upcoming year, make sure you comment them below and let me know what your thoughts are on my 10 bold predictions. Let's start off number one with the team that was on hard knocks, the Cleveland Browns. There's one player in particular that I'm very, very high on coming into this season for the Browns, and it is their former first overall pick, Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett, I believe, will take the NFL by storm this year and lead the NFL in sacks. Yes, there's a lot of hype surrounding Miles Garrett, and yes, we haven't really seen him play a full season yet in the NFL, but from what I've seen through the preseason, what I saw from him last year in his action last season, I believe Miles Garrett is going to absolutely dominate opposing tackles and offenses and lead the NFL in sacks. The Cleveland Browns are going to be more competitive this season. They're going to be in closer games, and I believe that's going to really allow Miles Garrett and the Browns' pass rush to get after it. Plus, you have to think that the Browns are a very aggressive defense under Greg Williams, and he loves to rush the passer. He's going to love a guy like Miles Garrett, and Miles Garrett is a just a monster. Every single time you watch him on the football field, he is a men among boys. So that's my first bold prediction for the 2018 season. Miles Garrett will lead the NFL in sacks. At number two, we're going to the rival of the Browns in the AFC North, the Baltimore Ravens, their quarterback. Now, Joe Flacco, I haven't been a huge fan of of the past couple of seasons. He hasn't played very well. He really hasn't played well since they won that Super Bowl in the 2012 season. But this year, I believe that the Ravens will get back to the playoffs for the first time since 2014, and Joe Flacco will lead them to the playoffs. I believe Joe Flacco will have a Pro Bowl caliber season for the Baltimore Ravens. I projected that the Ravens will finish sixth in the AFC this season, meaning that they'll be a wild card team. And I believe a lot of that will be due to the fact that their offense will actually be competent this year with Joe Flacco. Again, I love what I've seen from Joe Flacco throughout the offseason, through training camp. There's been a lot of positive reports about him working harder, his competitiveness alongside Lamar Jackson and RG3 in that quarterback room, and I believe that Joe Flacco is just going to have a huge year this year. He has the best weapons he's had in a while. He hasn't had a great receiver in quite some time. He hasn't had multiple targets to go to. Now he has tight ends and Hayden Hurst, Mark Andrews. He has a running back in Alex Collins and a running game, and then he has wide receivers like Michael Crabtree, Willie Sneed, and John Brown. So I believe that Joe Flacco, along with the Ravens defense will take the Ravens to the playoffs in 2018. One of my favorite teams in the NFC is the Carolina Panthers. And with the Carolina Panthers this year, I'm very high on their new offense under Norv Turner. I've really liked what I've seen throughout the preseason and the offseason. And I really like the changes they have made to their offense. One thing I've really liked in particular is how much they are going to utilize Christian McCaffrey in the Panthers offense. This guy has get, is going to get touch after touch after touch. Lining up as a receiver, he's lining up as a running back, he's taking screens, he's doing it all. And Christian McCaffrey, I believe, will have a huge season for the Carolina Panthers alongside Cam Newton and will enter the elite running back status this year. Yeah, I know that's kind of bold because Christian McCaffrey wasn't really a great runner of the football last year, but I believe that's going to change this year. Yeah, the Panthers do have some injuries on the offensive line, but I think the passing game, the receivers at his disposal for Cam Newton is going to open up the running game a little bit. I think Norv Turner going to more of a pro style offense as opposed to what they had there before is really going to allow Christian McCaffrey to break out and have a great season. Plus, he's already one of the top receiving backs in the NFL. I think he climbs the ladder this year and is going to be a great fantasy pick, but also a great real life running back. At number four, 
Let's go to my New England Patriots. The one bold prediction I have for my team, the Patriots, is that Rob Gronkowski will lead the NFL in touchdowns and also be considered an MVP candidate. That's pretty bold, but Rob Gronkowski has done it before. He has led the NFL in touchdowns once before in 2011, and that was the only time that a tight end has ever done so. Um, But Rob Gronkowski, I believe, will do it again this year, and I believe he'll play so well that he will be considered an MVP, which is extremely rare for a tight end. But Rob Gronkowski, I just believe that the Patriots don't have a ton of great receiving options outside of Gronk. I mean, Hogan is pretty good. He's a number two receiver. You have Julian Edelman in a four-game suspension, but once he comes back, that should be pretty solid. They have their running backs, but when it comes to the red zone, when it comes to the number one guy Brady's going to go to, I believe it's going to be Rob Gronkowski, and all reports from Gronk is that he feels 100% better than he did last year. He feels great, and he knows he's going to play great, and I think Gronk is just going to be a monster throughout this season. I don't really think he's going to be as banged up as he has been in the past. Gronk is just going to dominate the NFL. He's a monster, and I think he's just going to bully people because Brady doesn't really have the wide variety of targets to go to, so he's going to have to focus a little bit more on his number one guy, Rob Gronkowski. At number five, I have the 49ers. Of course, the Patriots did trade Jimmy Garoppolo to the 49ers, and this year will be his first full season as an NFL starter for San Francisco. The 49ers, to me, are going to make the playoffs, and the reason why they're going to make the playoffs this year is because of their electrifying offense under Kyle Shanahan and, of course, Jimmy Garoppolo, which will finish top five in the NFL. I believe that the 49ers will score a ton of points and get a ton of yardage to be considered a top five offense when the regular season ends. You think about their offense. I think their talent is kind of underrated with Jimmy at quarterback, Jarek McKinnon at running back, who has all the tools to be a number one back in the NFL, whether that's catching the football, whether that's running his elite speed or his quickness. And then you have Matt Breida behind him, who's a capable number two running back. At tight end, George Kittle is a young player that's kind of coming into his own. And then the receivers are pretty good. You talk about Marquise Goodwin, who can stretch the field. And then Pierre Garçon, who's a good possession receiver. And then Dante Pettis, a rookie who's looked very capable in the preseason. So I believe that this offense is going to be absolutely electrifying and be in the top five in the NFL when it's all said and done in 2018. At number six... This might shock some people a little bit, but I do believe that Deion Lewis will outperform Derrick Henry in Tennessee this season. Now, the reason I say this is a variety of reasons, but the number one thing is I just believe that Deion Lewis is a very good running back. I've seen it over the course of the last couple of years with New England. What he can do with the ball in his hands is unlike many other players in the NFL. I believe he's one of the shiftiest, quickest players in the NFL. He has a rare ability to make people miss in the open field. He also has a great underrated asset of his strength with the football. And I do believe he can carry the load for a team. Derrick Henry, I just think is too unproductive. He takes too many carries, too long to really break out. He's very, very, very reliant on a lot of touches. He's very reliant on a lot of carries because he's a bigger bodied back. He doesn't get a lot of yards per carry. He's one of those guys that gets like a, he'll get like a two yard carry, but then all of a sudden he'll break like a 30 yard carry after he gets a bunch of two yard carries. So to me, I just think Deion Lewis' versatility with his ability to catch the ball, his ability to run the ball, I think that's going to fit the offense better in Tennessee, as well as the fact that Henry hasn't really showed that he can be a consistent number one back in the NFL just yet. At number seven, I do believe that the AFC will have a mini resurgence this year and be stronger than the NFC conference. But I believe when this season wraps up, we'll be talking about how strong the AFC is. Okay, so we have Deshaun Watson who's coming back to Houston. I believe they'll be a playoff team this year along with J.J. Watt and Whitney Merciless and all the players that they've added in the offseason. Also in the AFC South, you already have Jacksonville who has a great defense, the best in the league in my opinion, and arguably the most talented roster. 
Then you have the Indianapolis Colts who are getting back a top 10 quarterback, maybe even better with Andrew Luck coming back. I don't believe the Colts are going to be a great team, but Andrew Luck makes them that much more competitive. And then you also have the Titans who should improve with a better offense this year. And they were a playoff team last year who even won a game in the playoffs. You look at the AFC West, the Broncos have a better quarterback, thus they'll probably be a better team. The Chargers should improve and get to the playoffs this year and are one of the most talented rosters in the NFL. You look at the Raiders, John Gruden, and what they've done with their defense and some of their draft picks have really looked like they're going to be very good for them. You go to the Bengals, who I think are going to be better with an improved offensive line on already very good defense. And then you have the Browns, who I don't really need to say much. They're a lot more talented. The Ravens, I said, are going to make the playoffs. The only division I'm really concerned about is the AFC East. I don't think the Bills will be as good, but the Dolphins could be better with Ryan Tannehill at quarterback. And the Jets, I think, will be just as good, if not better, with Sam Darnold there at quarterback as well. So I believe the AFC will be a stronger conference than the NFC in 2018. At number eight... The Cowboys' defense is going to be significantly better than their offense. Now, why am I saying this? Well, I'm not a huge believer in the Cowboys' offense this year because of a variety of reasons. The first is that they don't have a lot of weapons for Dak Prescott to throw to. They don't have a capable tight end. They don't have a number one wide receiver. And their offensive line has taken a hit throughout the offseason with a couple of injuries that I think may hurt them over the course of the season, whether that's Travis Frederick or Zach Martin. Both of these guys are a little bit banged up, and you don't really know the timetable for these two players. Also, I do believe the Cowboys defense is going to be very good. Their defensive line is stacked all the way with great depth. Demarcus Lawrence is one of the better pass rushers in the league. Irving should come back from suspension. Randy Gregory even looks good. Um, they have very good depth on the defensive line from the interior out. And then the linebacker position looks better on paper. Jalen Smith has another year to improve. Sean Lee is healthy. And they did draft a first rounder at that spot. And their secondary is just getting a little bit more experienced. So I believe the Cowboys defense is going to be very underrated and actually better than their offense this year in 2018. My 10th prediction is maybe the boldest of them all. The Eagles will actually struggle to make the playoffs. I do believe that the Eagles will make the playoffs. I do believe that they will win the NFC East and be the fourth seed in the NFC. But I do believe that they will somewhat struggle to get there. Now, there is a few reasons why. The first being that Carson Wentz is not yet cleared to be the quarterback of the Eagles in week number one. And if he does indeed miss time, this is going to significantly hurt the team. I actually think that the way that the Eagles' talent was lined up last year, it may be a little bit overrated. Um, I think that they were amazing last year and everything fell together perfectly, but it's hard for that to happen two years in a row. And with your quarterback, who is an MVP caliber player last year not suiting up, it's going to really be tough for them to do it two times in a row. And then also Alshon Jeffrey is out for two weeks. Jason Peters is still banged up. And I just, I don't like the way they've been talking in the offseason, talking a lot of crap to a lot of different NFL teams. Here, I think they still are a playoff team, but I think they may struggle with the Giants getting a lot better in the NFC East, the Redskins still being a capable team, and the Cowboys getting Zeke back for at least probably most of the season, maybe hopefully the whole season. Those are my 10 bold predictions for the NFL season. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe. And of course, comment below your bold predictions as well as your thoughts on my bold predictions. It's Mitch at the Bottom Line View. Peace out.